Hiya friends, Prepared Suburbanite back with uh, you with this series on um, aging in place. This is part four of this particular series and uh, this one's going to focus on alerts and alarms. And I think it's uh, pretty important to, to understand the, um, the gravity of having alerts and alarms available for any um, senior type citizen that uh, you may be or that if you're a caregiver or a guardian for a senior, um, an aged adult, that uh, you pay some attention to some of the uh, tips and tricks that we're uh, going to cover in this video. So stick around right after the intro. Well, I guess I haven't done a real good job trying to keep uh, these videos at uh, the 10 minute, 12 minute mark because uh, they're all pushing uh, 20 minutes and um, I'm not sure if uh, that's good or bad, uh, but the advice that I got was to try to keep them under 15 minutes and uh, I've not been uh, uh, very accurate with uh, my timing on these things. But we are going to talk about alerts and alarms and uh, what, what, I, what I'm trying to focus on here is what happens when something goes wrong and what mechanisms do you have in place as an aged, an aging adult um, or uh, as a caregiver for an aging adult that uh, you got to keep in mind. So let's uh, get right to it. Um, first up on the list, and I, I gathered these from a number of different sources. Um, the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, um, senior, uh, senior Life, um, medical websites like WebMD, uh, places like that, um, the um, Council on Aging, uh, different places around and I compiled uh, all these things and tried to break them into categories that um, could be meaningful and so without further ado let's get started. So first up on uh, uh, this particular list in uh, part four of these uh, of this uh, video series is keep your cell phone nearby so that you can call for assistance in case of a fall or an other type of an emergency. Make sure that your cell phone is programmed with all the right numbers. Friends, family, 911, Sheriff's Department, local police department, uh, fire department, um, pretty much uh, hospitals, your physician. Uh, so make sure your phone is programmed so that you've got uh, ready access to all those numbers on your contact list. Second on the list is develop a support system. Now that can be family, um, your, your kids, grandkids, uh, brothers, sisters, parents, uh, you name it. Um, I, I would make sure that you have those folks listed as part of your support system, your friends, your neighbors, uh, f your church members, folks that you know from church. Um, make sure that you've got that list readily available so that in case anything happens to you that they can be notified for whatever support they can be counted on to deliver for you. Get a medical alert system. Now a medical alert system, uh, they can be somewhat um, expensive uh, and somewhat inexpensive. 
um, the, the necklace that you can kind of wear that you just press a button on and it automatically connects you with um, the local emergency services, things like that. I would be, uh, um, uh, um, I'd be very strong in recommending that that's exactly what you do if you feel the need for it. Now, not everybody needs to do this. But um, if you are currently suffering with some kind of a uh, malady, um, uh, you have a tendency to fall, um, those kinds of things, um, uh, an investment in a medical alert system is highly recommended. Again, I, and this is kind of a duplicate from uh, uh, some of the other suggestions out there, is to create a, an escape plan, a fire escape plan, or an emergency escape plan. Know all your egress points where you can get out of your house safely so that you know where things are, where, where you're going to go, and have a location if you have to leave your um, home. And make sure that your support friends, neighbors, relatives, etc. know where that is for you. So, um, that safe meeting place can be um, very, very helpful. Make sure that you have in your home not only um, smoke alarms, but carbon monoxide alarms. Uh, very important and make sure that you keep up to date with the battery changes. Um, it's recommended that every time we uh, change times from standard to daylight savings, that you uh, use that occasion to refresh those batteries, change out the old ones, put in new ones, and make sure, test them, make sure that they're working. Um, there's always a button on there that you can push to hear the alarm and make sure that everything's working. Invest in an alarm system. Now, some folks don't need this. I don't think I do. But if you want to pay the price for the 24 by 7 coverage for um, the kinds of paid uh, alarm alert systems that uh, um, it can be well worth the investment where it can automatically alert you and or alert the emergency services, 911, Sheriff's Department, Fire Department, uh, in case something um, odd happens in your uh, home environment. So I would uh, highly recommend that uh, you invest in that kind of professional alarm system. And there's a ton of them out there. Prices vary quite a bit. and uh, uh, But it, it certainly is recommended for those that truly need to um, have that kind of automatic alarm and alert system available to them. I hope you found this series helpful. I hope you found this series gave you um, some ideas and some, some tips and some uh, suggestions where you may be able to live your life a little bit more safely. If you found this information helpful, please, down below, Give us a thumbs up, click on the like, um, make sure you're subscribed, um, and double check if you think you're subscribed, make sure you still are, odd things happen, and um, share this video with folks of, uh, that may need to know this kind of content. This is the Prepared Suburbanite reminding you to be prepared always, and I'll see you all on the next video.